Hey guys, this video is one of many which walk through how I use Anki in med school. This time around, I'm going to discuss how I structure my decks and keep things clean and organized across several classes. If you aren't familiar with Anki, I'd recommend checking out my intro to Anki video first to get on board. To start, let's assume we're on the first day of a new course. At my school, we generally take one course at a time, and each course is broken into three or four exam blocks. To keep things straight, I like to make one parent deck for the course with a sub deck for each exam block. Making a parent deck is similar to making a regular deck. Just click Create Deck at the bottom of the home screen. Type in the name of the parent deck followed by two colons and the name of the first sub deck. You should end up with something like this. To make another sub deck, follow the same process but use a different sub deck name. You can even create sub sub decks although I've never gone that far personally. I should mention that the more complicated your deck structure is, the slower Anki will run. I also personally prefer simple organization for most things in general. Now that you have your deck structure in place, you'll need to fix a couple settings. To begin, click the options icon next to the parent deck. You'll notice the options group is labeled default. All new decks will start with this set of options when you create them. As you can see in the red text, any changes you make to these settings will affect all decks connected to the default options group. To keep things clean, you'll need to make a new options group called Course. Now, anytime you make a parent deck for a course, simply assign the Course Options group and that deck will immediately include all the settings necessary for your parent decks. In each of the Options tabs, you'll see a number of useful settings. For now, let's just make a couple simple adjustments. First, I'm going to change the new cards shown each day to 200. This means that all subdecks combined will only show 200 new cards a day, as long as there's that many left. You can do the same thing for the number of review cards shown each day. For now, let's set that to 500. Don't worry, you're probably not going to be reviewing 500 cards a day. We'll get to that in a minute. Click OK to save the settings and open the options for your first subdeck. This time, you should see the new Course Options group in the drop-down. If you were working on another parent deck, all you'd have to do is assign this group to that deck and you'd be set. But since this is a sub-deck, let's create a new Options group called Current Exam Block. This time, set the number of new cards to 70 and the number of review cards to 200. These numbers will affect the material you are currently learning in class. Many people have asked me what numbers I use, and honestly, it's heavily dependent on the course. You'll need to adjust as needed so that you are keeping up with the cards you're making and the cards you've reviewed in the past without getting overwhelmed. All right, to summarize what we have so far, we have a parent deck, which limits our total new cards per day to 200, and our total review cards per day to 500. Within that deck, we have a sub deck, which holds the cards we are currently making. The subdeck limits our current material to 70 new cards and 200 review cards. Because these limits are stricter, we'll never actually see more than 70 new cards or 200 review cards in this deck, even though the parent deck can hold more. Let's say the first exam passes, but I'm still planning on keeping up with the reviews of that material for the cumulative final exam. First, you'll need to make a new subdeck for the exam 2 material. You can assign the options group you made for the first subject to the new one now that your new cards will be entering this subdeck. Going back to the first exam subdeck, you can make a new options group which is assigned to past material. I'll just name it past exam block. Since there shouldn't really be many new cards in this subdeck, it really doesn't matter too much what the new card limit is. For reviews though, you could set a limit of 100 or so in order to focus on the new material you're, you're seeing in exam 2 subdeck. To be honest, I usually keep the number pretty high so I'm seeing all the cards that are due each day, even for the material I've already been tested on. But I wanted to show the level of control you can have if you're overwhelmed and need to set some limits. After each exam, you can simply create a new subdeck for the next block of material and assign it the current exam block options group. All of the previous exam blocks which you've been tested on already 
can be assigned the past exam block options group, which allows you to reduce the number of old cards you're seeing if needed. After several courses, you might have a structure something like this. Of course, it's up to you whether you want to keep up with the cards from past courses or past exams in your current course, but this structure gives you some flexibility to choose what you focus on without having an unreasonable number of decks. I should mention that you can review a course in one of two ways. If you choose to review the parent deck, you'll see the cards which are due from all the subdecks. The cards will be shown in the order that the subdecks are listed, so in this case, you'll see all the Exam 1 cards first, then all the Exam 2 cards, etc. You can also review a subdeck directly. In this case, only the cards from that subdeck are shown. The order of your reviews may make a difference in some cases. One important thing to remember is that the limits on your parent deck apply to all the subdecks combined. In our example, we had set a review limit in the parent deck of 500 cards per day. If our exam one deck of old cards has 400 review cards due today, and the new exam two deck has 200 review cards due today, it matters which one I review first because the total cards due is more than the parent deck limit of 500. If I choose to review my new material for exam two first, I will already have reviewed 200 of the 500 cards for that day. That means the exam one deck will only allow me to review 300 more, even though there are 400 due. However, if I review the exam one deck first, I'll have reviewed 400 of 500 cards for the day and will only see 100 review cards of exam two. The same is true if I chose to review the parent deck altogether because it automatically shows exam one cards before exam two cards. You can adjust the limits of the parent deck as needed to meet your needs. I generally just set new and review limits of 9,000 or so, so the parent deck limits are pretty much out of the picture. That way I can simply fine tune things using the current and past exam block option groups without worrying about the effects of the parent deck. Well, that should be a pretty good start as far as decks and settings go. Next, I want to walk through how I tag material to keep cards organized. After two years of making flashcards, I found the best way to organize material is by the lectures it came from. As I'm adding cards, I create tags like this one to note which lecture it came from. After adding each card, the tag remains in the tag field, so you really only have to create the tag once at the beginning of each lecture. The tags I use include the course name, the lecture number, and a title or description of the lecture content. In Anki, tags cannot involve spaces, so I use dashes and underscores to separate words. I also choose to number the lectures so they appear in order in the card browser. One thing that took me a while to figure out is that adding a zero in front of the single digit numbers ensures that they appear in order in the list. If you don't, then your tags will look something like this. Having all your cards labeled and numbered by lecture can be extremely valuable later on. Besides making it much easier to locate cards, it also enables you to create filtered decks using cards from only some lectures. I won't go into detail on filtered decks right now, but they allow you to selectively choose cards to study in a cram sort of fashion, which can be helpful leading up to a test. Lecture tags may also help you to add more specific tags later on. For example, you might decide later on that you want to tag all the cards related to pharmacology in your clinical medicine course. It's much easier to grab the cards in each of your farm lectures than it is to try to track down all the farm cards scattered throughout the course. It's hard to know early on which tags might be useful. That's why tagging your lectures can help you add tags later on. Finally, lecture tags allow you to selectively suspend or silence large chunks of cards at once. This can be useful if you find out a lecture isn't covered on an upcoming exam and you don't want to review those cards anymore. It's even more useful if you end up passing your deck on to students in next year's class. Having all the cards at once, they can suspend the whole deck and unsuspend cards one lecture at a time as they work their way through the course. I rely on these tags on a daily basis for these reasons and many more and I wish it hadn't taken me so long to start doing it. Well, that should give you a pretty good start on how I structure my decks. For more information on Anki and med school, check out some of my other videos.